The Romney Hythe and Dimchurch is the world's longest 15-inch gauge railway. It runs for 13 and a half miles across Kent's historic Romney Marsh from Hythe to Dungeness Lighthouse. Hythe Station is about a quarter of a mile from the town centre at Scanlands Bridge. Behind the station building is the train shed, which covers about half of the platform length. Although the track layout has been much modified over recent years, the station still boasts three platform roads and an engine release between platforms two and three. Because of the restricted size of the cabs of the steam locomotives, we've had to cheat and film the cab ride as it would be seen by the driver of number 12, John Southland. The sound effects you hear during the video were recorded on a journey behind locomotive number 5, Hercules. For the first few hundred yards of the journey from Hythe, the railway runs sandwiched between the back gardens of houses of Dimchurch Road and the banks of the Royal Military Canal. As Dimchurch Road starts to diverge from the railway, so the gardens give way to small factory units. So popular are these small units that a new industrial park is being built on the site of the old Hythe engineering works. As the railway owns all the land between the existing track bed and the canal footpath, the company has agreed to move the track over towards the footpath, thus releasing the existing track bed and some extra land for sale to the business park. This development will be finished by the beginning of the 1990 season. The new formation will rejoin the existing one here, where the track begins to wind its way between the houses of West Hythe. As we pass the block of flats at Elm Court, the Prince of Wales Bridge comes into view.
Once through the bridge, there's a steady climb up to Bob Hobbs Curve. Once clear of Palmarsh, the railway leaves the houses behind as it strikes out across open countryside towards Botholes Bridge. In the centre of our picture are the lights that guard the Bottles Bridge Road crossing. The driver will know that they're operating correctly as soon as he sees the white flashing repeater light. Once across Bottles Bridge, the line strikes out across the Willop.
After the run across the Willock, the train now slows as it approaches Burmarsh Road. As the train crosses the road, the platforms used by the daily school train can be seen on both sides of the track. Dimchurch station was almost completely rebuilt during the early 1980s. There are a few reminders of the past though. Here the original booking office is still in use. Trains often pass each other at Dimchurch. Here Southern Maid enters with an up train bound for Hythe.
As the train crosses Golden Sands Bridge, the remains of the old holiday camp platform can be seen amongst the buildings to the left of the line. Although all trains stop at Jefferstone Lane, the station is unmanned except for periods during the high season. The driver has to set the road lights by operating the plunger on the platform.
New Romney is the headquarters of the railway. As this track plan shows, it's too big a station to describe adequately in the short time we have available, so we will be looking at it in more detail in a later programme.
The passing loop at Romney Sand Station was constructed to enable a greater frequency of trains to run over the single track between New Romney and Dungeness. Here, the driver of Green Goddess exchanges the single line tokens with the driver of the down train.
Dungeness, 13 and a half miles after leaving Hythe. Alongside the station, the old lighthouse still attracts its fair share of visitors. Just down the road, its more modern replacement still blinks out its warning to channel shipping. Overshadowing everything, though, are the two nuclear power stations. Dungeness, the end of the line. Or perhaps it's just the beginning.